If you haven't noticed, a lot of the videos on this channel have something to do with J. Gresham Machen. He was one of the most important theologians and intellectuals of the early 20th century, but today relatively few know who he was. This video is meant to help remedy that problem. Today we're going to briefly examine Machen's life and try to better understand the context in which he defended his convictions. J. Gresham Machen was born in 1881 in Baltimore, Maryland to well-to-do and socially connected parents. Importantly, they were both committed Christians, Presbyterians to be specific, and intellectuals. From, an, from a young age, Machen was steeped in literature, classical languages, the Bible, and the Westminster Shorter Catechism. The culture of the United States during the years in which Machen was raised was thoroughly Protestant, but signs of weakness were beginning to appear. In 1893, the PCUSA, the predominant Presbyterian church in the northern United States, went through a divisive heresy trial that resulted in the excommunication of Charles Briggs, a theologian who, despite his affirmation of the Westminster Standards, undermined the authority of Scripture in his teaching. While the excommunication of Briggs on the surface seemed like a success for evangelicals, the heated controversy resulted in reluctance to launch additional heresy trials as more and more liberals entered the church. In this context, liberal is not a political term, but instead refers to those who doubted or rejected key elements of historic Christianity, including the authority of scripture, the existence of the supernatural, and the miracles and resurrection of Jesus. Meanwhile, Machen had little idea that his life would be closely tied to the direction of the Northern Presbyterian Church. He began undergraduate study of classics at John Hopkins in 1898 and then entered Princeton Seminary and University for graduate work in 1902. He remained unconvinced of his future direction and Christian ministry had little appeal. Nonetheless, he graduated from seminary in 1905 and was persuaded to study theology for a year in Germany. At the time, German theologians were on the cutting edge of liberal thought, and Machen studied under some of the most prominent of them. While the ideas were not necessarily new to him, he had been exposed to this school of thought in the United States, though less directly, he was deeply impressed with the intellect and piety of some of his teachers. His faith was shaken, and this, along with his professional uncertainty, made him all the more reluctant to pursue Christian ministry. He was persuaded, however, to take a one-year contract at Princeton Seminary as a lecturer of Greek with no further obligation. Ultimately, he, reviewed, he renewed that contract several times as his theological conviction returned and he began to acknowledge a calling to Christian ministry. Thus, he finally agreed to be ordained in the PCUSA in 1914 and was made assistant professor in the New Testament department shortly thereafter. During the early years of his professorship at Princeton, he largely remained out of controversies. He took leave from the school for a year to serve as a noncombatant in World War I, though he had been opposed to U.S. entry into the war and later criticized the harsh terms imposed on the German people following the surrender. Upon his return from the war, he quickly found himself engaged in the latest battles in the PCUSA. The most visible controversy at the time was whether the Presbyterian Church should agree to a plan of union through which the denomination would join forces in significant ways with other large Protestant denominations. Machen strenuously opposed this effort, arguing that it would essentially strip away any adherence to the Westminster Standards and thus the uniqueness of the Presbyterian Church. In the midst of the controversy, Machen published his first significant academic work, The Origin of Paul's Religion, in which he dismantled various liberal attempts to explain away Paul's Christianity as distinct from that of Jesus himself uh, and based on external influences. The book's reception helped establish his credibility as a rising conservative star in the Presbyterian Church. Machen's best-known work came two years later. Late in 1922, a liberal Baptist named Harry Emerson Fosdick preached a widely publicized sermon entitled Shall the Fundamentalists Win, in which he decried the efforts of conservatives to root out liberal beliefs in the church. He argued that tolerance toward those who rejected key doctrines, authority of scripture, the bodily resurrection of Jesus, and so forth, was essential. 
Machen responded to Fosdick and other liberals with the book Christianity and Liberalism, now regarded as one of the great defenses of historic Christianity. Machen ruthlessly argues that the essence of Christianity is based on historical facts, such as the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, and that liberalism, by rejecting these essential truths, is not Christianity at all. He also accuses liberals of deceitfulness for their refusal to disassociate from the Presbyterian Church, despite their clear opposition to the Westminster Standards, part of the Church's constitution that they had vowed to uphold when ordained. The controversy soon reached its climax. The Auburn Aff Affirmation, circulated in 1923 and signed by hundreds of clergy in 1924, argued for tolerance of those who held to different theories of the authority of Scripture, miracles, and so forth. Conservatives were unable to deal de a decisive blow to this liberal effort in the subsequent General Assembly and never again came close to doing so. The rapid decline in the strength of conservatives in the Presbyterian Church and among fundamentalists more generally can be traced to a crucial turning point in 1925. The trial of John Scopes for teaching evolution in a public school was a media sensation, and the leader of the prosecution, a prominent conservative Presbyterian named William Jennings Bryan, was disgraced in the court of public opinion. So at this point, liberals turned their attention to the seminary where Machen taught. Princeton Seminary, since the merger of the old and new school branches of the Presbyterian Church in 1861, had served as the representative of the old school, resisting the forces of cultural shift and emphasizing doctrinal fidelity. Liberals and centrists in the denomination decried the faculties, and particularly Machen's, supposed intolerance, and thus first denied Machen's promotion to professor in 1926, and then embarked on a mission to wrest control of the seminary from the existing conservative leadership. Over the protests of Machen and others, the, the General Assembly did reorganize the seminary in 1929, at which point Machen and several others resigned their positions and founded Westminster Theological Seminary in Philadelphia. The mission of the new seminary was to keep alive the original spirit of Princeton, now that it, now that it had been overrun by liberal voices. Machen was the principal figure in this controversy and in the founding of the seminary, and yet somehow he found time to complete what he considered his greatest work, The Virgin Birth of Christ, published in 1930. As the title suggests, <clears throat> the volume defends the historicity of the virgin birth against a wide range of scholarly attacks, and the book remains highly regarded today. Though increasingly marginalized in his denomination, Machen continued to fight, in particular to keep the seminary afloat despite opposition from the church and financial difficulties during the Great Depression. But he soon entered another controversy, this time on the subject of missions. Back in 1923, Machen had raised the concern that many of the missionaries supported by the PCUSA were jettisoning an emphasis on the gospel and conversion in favor of a social gospel focused on meeting humanitarian needs. Now, in 1932, a book entitled Rethinking Missions made this new focus clear, and when the General Assembly refused to confront the error, Machen founded an independent missions board to direct donations only to those missionaries who were faithful to the gospel. Machen's action was seen as rebellion against the denomination. It alienated some of his conservative allies, and through trials plagued with irregularities, he was convicted, defrocked, and excommunicated from the Presbyterian Church. Thus, in 1936, he turned to the formation of a new denomination known today as the Orthodox Presbyterian Church. Now Machen was the leader of both a young seminary and a brand new denomination. The latter in particular faced numerous challenges. Its membership was small, since relatively few churches and ministers defected from the mainline church, and internal conflict over theology and personalities rapidly became apparent. Machen himself put immense personal effort into promoting and strengthening the fledgling church, in addition to his normal teaching responsibilities at the seminary. And so, during the seminary's break for Christmas, rather than taking much-needed rest, Machen agreed to visit several small churches in frigid North Dakota. There he fell ill and was hospitalized and ultimately died of pneumonia on January 1, 1937. Machen's death was a heavy blow to the movement he led, and many of his allies were quick to give him glowing praise. More interesting, perhaps, were the eulogies of H.L. Mencken, the acerbic atheist journalist, and Pearl Buck, one of the liberal missionaries that Machen had criticized. Despite their rejection of Machen's faith, both spoke of their admiration for his clear thinking, determination, and refusal to compromise his convictions. 
Today, Machen's influence continues in tangible ways through the continued thriving of the Orthodox Presbyterian Church and Westminster Theological Seminary and the continued popularity of his writings, particularly Christianity and liberalism. But his example as a modern-day defender of the faith has also inspired many to live lives characterized by conviction and sacrifice. If you're interested in learning more about Machen's life, I'll put some recommended reading in the description below. And if you're interested in more content like this, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Thanks.